Blog Talk Radio. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. The accident was over a year ago. A second woman has been elected president. A twelfth planet has been named in the solar system. The last wild polar bear has died. I slept through it all. Here for my waking. He called it a beginning. He said it was good. I think he may have thought that anything I did was good. Welcome to Transition Radio, live from Wilton Manors, Florida, with your host, Mark Angelo Cummings. And your hostess, Jessica Lane Cummings. And now I got it. <laughs> yeah. 
You definitely have that Texas uh, accent. I lived in Texas for four years, but it never stuck with me, the accent. What part of Texas is yeah. Houston, right? Yeah, born and raised here. Um, born and raised here with detours in New Orleans for a couple of years and uh, Louisville for eight. So other than that, I've been pretty much Gulf Coast girl. Mm-hmm. There you go. I gotta say, Houstonian was a very hard word for me to say at first. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. Houstonian. Yeah, but definitely. So it's a pleasure having you here with us, and uh, yeah. you know our parents are definitely gonna get a treat with you. You definitely have done a lot for the community. And I followed your blogs, and we're definitely passionate about what you do. And we thank you for everything that you've done for our community. Yes, you did. Well, Monica, where does your passion stem from, and how do you feel about being transgender? Well, for starters, um, a lot of it is I, you know, so I've always had this belief of leaving areas that I encounter better than when I did when I arrived, and that was also true for the trans community. So. When I transitioned in 94, and it wasn't even close to being where we are human rights-wise, when I say as we are now with the end of about to be voted on in the Senate, uh, in 94, we got cut out of that vote. <laughs> about that, you know, say, we got cut out of that vote at that time. And there definitely wasn't the representation of trans people of color that you're starting to see now. So, yeah, so a lot of my motivation ironically comes from pissed off about um, a transgender tapestry interview that I I saw when I had a subscription to it back, uh, back then. They were doing issues um, on 100 out and proud trans people, and they were doing it since such uh, a tapestry was a quarterly publication. They were doing them 25 um, people at a time. So I get my first issue, and the first 25 come out, and it's folks like Jameson Green and uh, Ricky Wilkins and – that's it. And my mentor, uh, Phyllis Fry, and so I'm like, okay. So the next, let's say, the next month, the quarterly issue comes up, and I'm like, okay, where are the people who look like me? And I go through that issue, and I look at the bottom of it, and in that next 25 is RuPaul and Dennis Rodman. So. Yeah, I was more than a little pissed off about that and motivated enough to basically uh, make sure that uh, that I was going to kill some of my vacation time at the next lobby day in uh, 1998, and I haven't looked back since. <laughs> I guess uh, the motivation was disappointment and anger, and I guess that really is part of motivation for a lot of us to get things done. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about being transgender? Um, it's the I, say, I wish I'd done it sooner. <laughs> in some, to be honest, in some cases, but uh, but realistically, when I look at the time frame that I grew up in, I grew up. I say Renee Richards was all over the news when I was a teenager, and growing up here in Texas, and I also in 1975. I on our news on the news here was also a trans woman by the name of uh, I say I say what was her name um I say uh, Tony Mays I just thought of it Tony Mays who was being harassed by the Houston Police Department uh, every time she came popped out of her door to say they were using the anti cross dressing law to harass her. And she filed a federal suit to get HPD off her back. You know that law would go bye bye uh, about five years later when Phyllis Fry took it down. Uh, so, but um, still, um, at that time period, you know, at that time period, I was like, 
okay. That you know that introduced me to you know say, to the concept of yeah okay this is what I'm dealing with right now, but you know I still had to ask myself the question where are the people who look like me you know um, say it's only now you know since I started the blog and started doing the you know say the research that I'm actually d- uh, diving and finding a lot of the history that trans people of color have really been a major part of of helping get this community you know, to get get this community going and to getting it organized and and getting it I say moving transhuman rights wise and you know it's a I say a proud history that we have. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Let me ask you: Has lobbying for the trans community yielded any results? And if so, can you elaborate on it? Depends on where you're talking about it. If you're talking about it at the federal level or the state levels, um, uh, at the federal, okay. If you're talking about federal level, we'll you know we'll start with the federal level. Um, I let's say I would say that us being as a us being uh, say having a consistent presence on Capitol Hill. Lobbying wise, since 1994, has gotten us to the you know to the point where we do have an inclusive ENDA. Uh, remember, ENDA didn't include us, and at one point uh, during the night during the late 90s, Elizabeth Birch, who used to run HRC, once said that trans inclusion and in ENDA would happen over her dead body. And look at it as a and since and we look at it now here we are in you know say here we are in 2013 and we're about two let's say a couple of weeks away from having a vote in the senate on ENDA uh, that on an ENDA that has trans inclusion you know that that is trans inclusive you know say but we still have a lot of work to do we we really do still have a lot of work to do on a lot of levels. You know, my home state, for example, we're still, you know, say we're still struggling with trying to get a name change bill that will at least streamline the process, and we've been working on that since 1999. Crazy. And the fact that our legislature went teabagger didn't exactly help. <laughs> but, uh, no, exactly. Real, 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 yeah. Just, Crazy. Well, tell us a little bit about Monica, her likes, dislikes, and adventures. Mm, there's a, let's say a lot of different things about me besides liking writing. Obviously, since you know, since I do that blog that has over seven thousand posts over it over almost eight years, um, I do like. I say. I do like my football, as you probably guessed from the uh, NFL prediction post. That's never changed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I do. I say I do like my football. I say I like good food from time to time, especially seafood. Being around here, being, being only thirty minutes from the Gulf, uh, my loyal, you know, hanging out with my loyal, you know, say with my friends, uh, and just living my life. You know, say living my life to the best of my ability. That's all we can do. Now I have a question. Mm-hmm. You've been you said you've been to uh Louisiana, uh to Kentucky and you live in Texas. Who's got the better barbecue? We've got the better barbecue? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Everybody says Texas hands down, but <laughs> what uh, do you say? I, I they actually had a place they actually had a place that I went to in Ohio called City Line in the Columbus called City Line that was owned by some expatriate Texans and when I rolled up to it um, there was actually stacks of mesquite wood outside so they they actually not only had brisket they, uh, that they cooked they also cooked it over uh, they cooked it over mesquite wood on top of that. There was another place that was open in Louisville that I used to hit a lot um, that unfortunately closed before I moved back home. So uh, 
Yeah, and it was the closest I could get to Texas style barbecue there. But uh and, but I actually I had relatives in Tampa and they took me to a place in Tampa that was pretty good and that was back in that was back in probably ninety four. Ninety four. I'm not sure if that place is still open now. But uh <laughs> Well, I love barbecue. I'm going to be eating Mexican food in Texas, definitely. I lived in El Paso, Texas. Tex-Mex? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Oh. Neat food? Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, you're talking about, about how great. <laughs> yeah, another food. Let's see, we'll, we'll, cause, um, that'll be, uh, that discussion can go on. And I know y'all want to yeah. talk about some other stuff besides food. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, Monica, as a writer for a community that is marginalized, ridiculed, and judged, do you find it has been rewarding, or do you feel at times that you would rather disappear within the shadows and live your life? Uh, I had that opportunity. I said, I've never, I really never had that opportunity to just disappear in the shadows because, bottom line, uh, my transition was public from because I used to work in the airline business. And uh, 14 years, and I, and I literally transitioned in the middle of Terminal C at Intercontinental Airport. So I never really had the opportunity to just melt away. And then a couple of years later, I get into the activism at, uh, aspect of it. So I never, so I never really got to. You know, to get to the point where I was like, well, I can just fade into the background. Um, And especially since I started, you know, the activist part of my life, it, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet some wonderful people and some basically some folks, you know, let's say over my life that, you know, I wouldn't trade for, you know, if I had the opportunity to do it again. You know, I'd do it a little earlier, but you know, I said, but for the most part, I wouldn't trade it. You know, how many people can say that they actually sat down and talked to Sylvia Rivera or some of the, you know, or some of the other um, trans movers and shakers and you know icons like uh, you know Miss Major or you know conversate with you know say have conversations on a regular basis with uh, a Janet Mock. Or you know, say Laverne Cox that I say, or ISIS came calling you up on the phone from time to time just to check on you, <laughs> you know. So, or you get a chance to sit down and talk to you know politicians and various you know say other people, um, and you know I I never you know say my days have I can I'll, I can literally say my days are not boring ones, <laughs> you say for the most part, and they haven't been. In the almost twenty years I've been transitioned, so like I said, this is the second. You know, this is the second interview, radio interview I've done in the last seventy-two hours. So uh, you know, well, mm-hmm. well, we're glad to have you here. And I do have a mm-hmm. pretty important question. Um, yeah. How how do you feel that you know everywhere? Uh, the transgender community is actually received differently. Um, and I was just curious, how is the transgender community received in Texas? It's, interestingly enough, we've got, it's been, um, it's been getting a little better here. Um, the uh, interesting dynamic we have here in Texas, probably like Florida, is the cities are progressive, you know, but the rural areas and the suburbs are red as what a you know red is a red red and tea bagger control. So we have the same dynamic here. You know we have the same dynamic here in Texas. We have pretty much you know the large cities like your Houston's, Dallas's, San Antonio's, uh, Austin's are are blue, and even then down you know say so down along the Rio Grande Valley going back up to El Paso that's pretty much blue turf. Um, and Dallas is one of the few cities and few areas where just where at every level of their 
you know, of their government, uh, their county, the city, all the quasi-governmental organizations, uh, several of the, uh, you know, say of the colleges in the area have non-discrimination, either non-discrimination laws on the books or they have, uh, or they have non-discrimination statements like the uh, University of North Texas up there, uh, Dallas County Community uh, College. Um, the city of Austin has not, you know, say non-discrimination that that includes say that uh, San Antonio just passed it in September, an inclusive, I'll say, a non-discrimination ordinance rewrite that has sexual orientation and gender identity language in it. Dallas has had that, even uh, and even here in Houston, while we don't have the non-discrimination ordinance with that language in it yet. Um, we do have an at you know, say HISD, which is you know the largest you know one of the seventh largest school districts in the nation, does have that language in its non-discrimination and bullying policies. Same with Dallas Independent School District, uh, Fort Worth, and Fort Worth School District. So it's it's awesome. It's it's a it could of time. be better. It, yeah, it could be better, but um, you know, let's say, but it's not you know totally. Uh, is a bad either. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's progressive. It's changing. And little by little, the more visibility mm-hmm. will change the world. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Now let's shift a little bit. Yeah. Here. And, um, we're hoping. Yeah, we're hoping that we get, you know, say, we're hoping that uh, next year uh, we'll have a, you know, we'll have a different governor sitting in the chair. Um, you know, say, in terms of Wendy Davis uh, being in it. And we can make some headway against that uh, rookin' legislature that we have because uh, ours is about just as bad as the Florida one is. So, <laughs> so you know what the <laughs> thing. Has it been difficult to find love as a transgender woman or, or have you been blessed with unconditional love? Um, I've, As I've written in a post uh, one time, I wrote a, a post Valentine's Day about it, I said, I've wandered in a dating Sinai for so long the Israelites passed me twice and shook their heads as they headed to the promised land. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, don't give up. There's so, someone else yeah. for you. There's someone yeah, out there for so, all. Yeah. You yeah, might find that's, yourself that's, a nice little trans guy, you know? Yeah, I like oh. to say, it's, yeah, it's, you know, that's it. It's been it's been that's been the frustrating aspect of it, but I was having that problem before I transitioned. So um, so um, I I've just looked at it. I just let go, and I say I, I just had the ad, attitude: let go, let go. And um, sooner or later, I'll run into. I say some, sooner or later that'll happen for me. But uh, in the interim, I just basically have taken that energy that I would have used to kind of focus on trying to get in relationships and try to use it to help build a better community for all of us. So. Mm-hmm. That's great. And before you know it, that special someone will come in when you least expect it because that's oh, how it yeah. happens. That's exactly how it happens. Yes, it does. And that's, that's, very usually, well yeah, that's, that's usually how it works out anyway. It's, it's how I've told some of the younger girls in the say that and so forth. I say, quit chasing, because usually that's when you, they usually start coming around. That's what that's when it usually happens. And that was true the last yep. time I was in one. Um, I, the minute I quit looking and quit focusing on it, that's when things started happening. So Exactly. So let me ask you, what are your goals for the future, and where can our listeners get a hold of you? Well, besides the blog, uh, I hope you know, every now and then I'll get an occasional, um, let's say, speaking engagement at a, you know, say, at a college or university around, you know, say, that wants to hear my thoughts about issues from an uh, Afrocentric perspective or um, or I bounce into the occasional conference and stuff because right now I'm helping organize uh, Creating Change, which is going to be here in Houston, uh, January 29th to February 2nd. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of the community here, uh, and in you know in my hometown when we say in January. So uh, 
So, yeah, from time to time I pop up at some of the major conventions. Um, you can, let's say, the blogs on, let's say, on Blogspot at, let's say, transcreo.blogspot.com. So, Excellent. Oh, Monica, we want to thank you so much for taking the time and uh, allowing us to interview you. I think you're doing an absolutely fabulous job. Uh, we thank you very, very much. And thank you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the invitation. And uh, so, y'all yeah, keep doing what you're doing on Transitions uh, Radio. It's a wonderful program. And uh, and I said, like hearing the different points of view of everybody that you bring on. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you so, so much, Monica. And if there's anything that you uh, need our help with or anything, just let us know, and we can help get the word out there. All right, appreciate that. And uh, same, I say, the same invitation uh, is extended uh, from my end. So y'all need it. Uh, I say, I'm, I said, the blog is at your service. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, hon. And you have a great day and a great. Halloween. Yes. Well, uh, the trans- yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, the tra- happy transnational holiday to y'all, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night, All right. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. In the trans news, scientists discover a transsexual gene that makes men feel like women by daily reporting. Transsexual men, which is improperly put it on this thing, is, you know, but you know how, how these news people are. They can't get anything right. Who feel female are likely to have an unusual version of a gene that affects the male sex hormone testosterone, a study has shown. The discovery was made by scientists who examined DNA from 112 male-to-female transsexuals. Israelite, singer Dana International, recent research shows that transsexuals like Dana are likely to have an unusual version of a gene that affects the hormone testosterone. In many cases, there was a longer version of a gene known to modify the action of testosterone. The alteration may under-masculinize the brain during its development in the womb, the researchers believe. Study leader Dr. Vincent Harley from Prince Henry's Institute in Clayton, Australia, said, There is a social stigma that transsexualism is simply a lifestyle choice. However, our findings support a biological basis of how gender identity develops. As with all genetic association, let me start over. As with all genetic association studies, it will be important to replicate these findings in other populations. The findings are published in the journal Biological Psychiatry. Professor Anders Sinclair from the University of Melbourne said, this research suggests that extra-long copies of an androgen receptor gene potentially affect testosterone functioning in the brain of male-to-female transsexuals. These effective copies of the AR gene could severely reduce normal testosterone levels, resulting in a more female-like brain. Consequently, male-to-female transsexuals might be expected to have a more feminized brain and are therefore likely to display a female gender identity. This support in transsexualism has a biological genetic basis rather than being due to psychosocial factors in early childhood. However, this finding does not explain all male to female transsexuals, suggesting that multiple genetic factors are involved. And so I guess for the FTM, it must be the RA gene or something? Uh, yeah. It's in- for the yeah, AFAR, AFAR, I guess it would be RA for the FTM. Yeah. Actually, when I did research back in the day, the SRY gene was the one responsible for creating a lot of the lyrics. I don't know, the alphabet. Yeah, well, it's the same thing as the right world. You mean the rest of the world? It's like all these genes. And, um, the alphabet, yeah. Look, like, we are who we are, and thank right God that there's not differences different. in the world, because how boring of a world would it be if we were all the same? Exactly. Transgender people had... Spice to life, you know, not to be on your toes. Hey, I'm sorry, no two people look exactly alike, unless they're identical twins. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, guys, we are off this Thursday, because it's Halloween, and we've got no a TV show. show. No TV show this Thursday. We wow. party at Wilton Manors, and they're just going to let it all out, and we're going to trick-or-treat and I have a good old time. For about. I don't know what I'm going to be yet. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you, Monica. We love you. Remember to always love yourself too. Good night, folks, and take care.